Hi there. In this lecture, we see Bobby Fischer against Tugan Petrosian. So Tigran Petrosian is actually one of my favorite world chess champions, as well as Bobby Fischer and Mikhail Tell. They're in my top 10 favorites. So this encounter in the Blood Tournament 1961 is very interesting. Indeed, we see Fischer playing e4, and Petrosian plays c6. He doesn't want any sharp variations against Fischer. c6, the Korokon, seems more positional in nature. So after d takes, knight takes, knight d7, playing it safe. No double pawns with knight f6, just knight d7. This is a very solid variation. Knight g f3, knight f6. A pair of knights come off. Bishop c4. The bishop comes out of the pawn chain. Queen e2, e6. So black's got a very, very solid, sensible position. Bishop g5. Bishop g4, now pinning the knight. So restraining white's potential for knight e5. Fischer castles queenside. We have bishop e7. H3, bishop takes f3, queen takes, knight d5. Bishops come off. This game seems to be heading for a draw, right? All of these exchanges. Rook d8, queen e4, b5. Is there a slight downside of this b5? Well, a5, it, it begets other pawn moves, which might be committal decisions, which could be regretted later. At the moment, it seems as though black's position is entirely formatic, because it suppresses c4 which means that this perched knight is as happy as a happy parrot perched there. So the knight on d5, very happy, g3, b4. Now, okay, this does mean c4, but the thing is, black is interested in playing for c5 later. So knight f6 is a trade-off. Queen e5, an interesting move. If queen e2, as an example, and say black castles, Bishop c2, c5. Black should be absolutely fine in this situation. So queen e5, a daring move. Now we have uh, the move c5. If queen takes d4 here, perhaps the key idea is queen c7. So that hits c6 and a5. If queen d7 just taking out a5, leaving b4 slightly vulnerable. This is okay for white. This is quite, quite pleasant. So on the other hand, if queen takes e5 was played, this situation, I'm not entirely sure why Petrosian didn't elect this route, because it seems as though the knight's pretty good. There's actually, it does seem as though there's absolutely nothing to worry about here. I mean, even this should be okay for g5 with enough counterplay, or if black wants to play super conservatively, just rook c8. And it doesn't seem as though, you know, white's without... Uh, a major entry point, even f6 is possible, this should be about even. So these scenarios turn out to be about even. But anyway, c5 was played. We have queen g5, and now h6. In this position, it turns out, and this is of course helpful to have the latest technology, that actually queen takes g7 doesn't lose, the queen doesn't necessarily get trapped. So I'll just show you, queen takes g7, king e7. It looks as though a trap's been set here. But you know, there's a small little detail about this position. That pawn is pinned, the f7 pawn, a slight little micro downside, you could say. And in fact, white can play d takes c5, queen takes c5, and then either rook, either rook, believe it or not, is actually holding the balance. For example, rook he one if queen g5 is actually the best move here, before we get into that, let's look. What's going on here? If rook dg8, guess what white plays? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. Rook takes e6 check. King takes. And then check. And we take this knight. And the, the black king is the one that's really kind of exposed. It's kind of all backfired. White ends up being actually, you know, crushing, crushing this. So yeah, queen g5 would have been like, <laughs> that's not really ideal if queen g5 is the best move. In this position, it is about even. And you could even actually do it with the other rook as well, actually. So d takes, uh, you can actually play rook d e1, because that rook has to hold h8. So if rook takes, queen takes. Yeah, and, and the same you know principles apply of rook takes e6. 
so it's fascinating but chess is not an easy game uh, there's still a major exposure if rook dg8 uh, we still play or the other one not the other one because of h6 but we still play rook takes e6 and start to expose the king as soon as we win f6 there's a major compensation so yeah things are not always what they seem but in the game yes uh, Fisher avoided all of this complication and just played queen takes c5 fascinating stuff there I thought okay another question you might ask about this queen trap mechanism or is it a queen trap d takes what about if the queen stuck around e6 square so queen c6 surely it's too dangerous this position the queen stranded it turns out white does have resources bishop g6 so looking at f7 and now the key move is rook hg1 and if rook hg8 rook d6 and even though white loses a piece it's it's very very tricky it's about equal dynamically if we go back by the way you might also ask this is a very tense position what about bishop takes f7 here is that interesting for white it turns out black's best here is not to play this where it's a bit murky even though black wins a piece it's a bit murky but black actually plays here queen e4 check so exploiting a weakness of the last move and then this is a much better version and yes black is much better here there's no terrible deflections or anything like rook d7 check the queen's holding the rook this is actually much better and black is winning that so bishop takes f7 is to be avoided but yeah fisher why would fisher want to go into all these complications after h6 so anyway yeah he played queen takes c5 very sensible move actually given all of that okay so tempting fisher for queen takes g7 if c takes d4 had played queen g7 here this is actually quite good for white yeah the king's a bit precarious in the center but the way it's played here is interesting queen takes c5 played here queen takes d takes king e7 rook c8 was also plausible and it looks like again you know these are drawing lines it looks as though white's got nothing really to write home about so anyway king e7 c6 rook d6 rook he1 rook takes c6 rook e5 there is a notion now that hang on this structure could be vulnerable and in end games you know potentially the structure could be vulnerable if the king starts walking on light squares but if that goes then b4 is weak we see rook a8 and now bishop e4 and surely fisher had been expecting knight takes e4 here instead he plays petrosian plays rook d6 it seems on knight takes e4 black shouldn't have anything to worry about here this looks like an, an entirely peaceful position where they can agree a draw the issue of this pawn chain doesn't seem that major to handle black should have enough here and it's strange yeah it seems as though petrosian was playing for imbalance here he actually played rook d6 now okay there's a little a little tempting uh trap you know if uh kind of thing if rook takes d6 was played which wasn't king takes this transaction that's fine for black maybe maybe is being expecting this trans transaction uh, because yeah that the king's quite active if anybody's better you know it could be black hair very, very aggressive king but in fact Fisher actually just takes on a8 he's got a5 to look at and then b4 could be weak so we have rook takes d1 check and the positions become unnecessarily imbalanced white takes off a5 and b4 is in fact weak the king comes up hitting b4 how very different this is we have c5 a dangerous pass pawn king d8 if rook takes h3 here then check and king takes this situation 
is just very very good for white for example like this bishop e4 key move to drag the knight away from key squares uh, for example like this is just queening and that's going to be an advantage for white so essentially yeah white's in the driving seat we see king d8 rook b5 rook takes h3 which is not check yet K rook b8 check and now check here and now a fatal blunder i mean black's actually in a worse position here but this goes into a mating net can you see what white does instead of that king d8 should have been played to, to stay in the game if black wanted to stay in the game but actually this situation just for the record is better for white with the rook on the seventh and these dangerous pawns it seems as though white's pawns are more dangerous as it turns out in many games than the opponent's pawns uh, many games of Fisher with careful preparation even this is advantageous white could sack the exchange and crash through so this is yeah white's actually technically winning this position anyway even before this blunder but it just walks into a mating net can you see what Fisher plays here if I give you five seconds to pause the video okay King c4 yeah it takes out escape squares there's no check the pawns looking at after h4 it's a forced mate if rook takes then can you see rook takes f7 is one of many mates <laughs> rook takes f7 is, is checkmate yeah it seems Petrosian over pushed here uh, the instructive point you know perhaps don't over push don't over create you know imbalances when you don't need to you know Petrosian maybe he just yeah I'm not sure why he didn't just take on e4 he was in an adventurous mood here to play rook d6 perhaps hoping for rook takes d6 but yeah with bishop takes a8 it's all to play for these pawns are, are kind of vulnerable and with that you know white has passed pawns so a very interesting critical moment of the game Petrosian unnecessarily creating imbalances imbalances are like you know the opponent has certain upsides you have certain upsides it's like dealing out different cards uh, but yeah blacks pawns are far slower here you know white's already got an advanced pawn once these are taken off the pawns of white are a bit quicker and also the king getting involved doesn't help the king just creates mating net possibilities which is uh, outrageous isn't it when you think it's about the pawns and all of a sudden there's a checkmate at the end so instru instructive game very practical lessons here maybe don't overcomplicate when you don't need to with the black pieces as well okay that's very much hi guys if you enjoyed this video lecture you might want to get more at my course kings crusher tv slash bobby fisher which i had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content i tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period i had an absolute blast creating it and i think you'll have an absolute blast checking it out and it's at a big discount code with this link you know kings crusher tv slash bobby fisher has the discount code so i hope you do check that out thanks very much